spending travel from seven countries and speaking yesterday morning before a convention of county sheriffs and police chiefs the president called the courts political he may by proclamation and for such period as he shall deem necessary so here it is people coming in suspend the entry of all aliens right that's what it says it's not like again a bad high school student would understand this. Anybody would understand this. I watched last night in amazement, and I heard things that I couldn't believe. Things that really had nothing to do with what I just read. And I don't ever want to call a court biased, so I won't call it biased. And we haven't had a decision yet. But courts seem to be so political, and it would be so great for our justice system if they would be able to read a statement and do what's right. Well, it's more than stunning. It is dangerous. Again, for anyone who knows the history of the 20th century, uh, it, is, it is dangerous when you have executives trying to denigrate the judicial branch and judicial independence. When you say what he said about federal court judges, um, it, it, it either is, it either is uh, a, an attempt to intentionally discredit them so he can strip them of power down the road, or it's a complete ignorance of the system. It is a system of checks and balances that began with Madison and Hamilton and presidents do not speak this way. And I saw you right. and I both qu uh, quote, quoted Jefferson last night uh, yeah. in some tweets about the extraordinary importance of judicial independence. It's, it's not even Je a 230-year tradition uh, he's, he's uh, messing with here. Again, the historical precedents, Mark Halperin, are chilling. Uh, I don't even want to mention their names, but I will say some of the most dangerous autocrats of the 19th or the 20th century, yeah. their two goals were to first undermine an independent judiciary and second to undermine a free press. This cross